fuck's sake. Hello, this is Script and Out from the future. Um, I think today is April the 19th. Uh, that's when I'm recording this. The reactions that you're watching were recorded back in February and March of this year. Um, so I'm cutting in this little video because a number of you on YouTube had said, where have you been? What have you been up to? We thought you were dead. Um, so I just wanted to confirm, not dead, um, and also fully caught up on The Expanse. So I can tell you now you're in for a brilliant ride with the reactions. I hope you enjoy the reactions as much as I enjoyed um, doing the reactions. It's been really, really great fun. I thought this season was just fantastic, but I won't go and spoil you with all of my thoughts now because you guys are just on episode two. Basically, I'm just pacing myself because I have a very big job. Um, thankfully, I work from home, so I've not been having to go to an office or anything during COVID. Um, but I'm a journalist, which means, you know, I'm looking at a lot of dark stuff. The world is very dark. Um, and I'm also autistic, which means even the things I love, like doing reactions, do take energy. So anything else that's been going on in the world, it's just important for me to pace myself and slow down. And so what I've been doing is I'm um, reacting to Battlestar Galactica, um, Patreon only. So if you want to be literally getting a video from me every week, just go over to Patreon because every week you get a video of battles, full length reaction to Battlestar Galactica. Um, we're at the back end of season three now. We're just at the second half of season three. So you'll have a load of stuff. Um, to, to catch up on there if you join us. We've also got a movie tier now over at Patreon. So every month you guys nominate and vote for um, a movie for me to watch and then I watch it. Um, so that's a good sort of two and a half, three hour reaction that you also get um, if you join on the movie tier. Um, and yeah, so with The Expanse, obviously I've already done it. So if you don't want to wait um, for one of these to come out a week on YouTube because YouTube edit takes Honestly, the amount of time it takes is insane. It's probably about five to six hours for me um, to, to do a YouTube. So to find that in my week is quite a is quite a big ask. So if you don't want to wait and you want to go and watch the, the rest of the season, that's also available on Patreon. Um, so yeah, my, my advice is if you want to see me more, join Patreon. Um, I'll still be doing stuff on YouTube, absolutely, of course. Um, but that will just, it will have to just be around... Um, when I can kind of fit it in. Um, so y you as YouTube subscribers don't come last because I love you very much. Um, but YouTube itself has to come last because it's just it's just the hardest thing to do. But yeah, I'm kind of, I'm, I can't remember, I didn't get COVID yet. Um, I'm being vaccinated this week. So hopefully um, I might have managed to avoid um, this plague. We live in a very, very small sort of village in the middle of nowhere. So it's not been quite as impactful to us as it has to other people because we've just essentially sort of pretended the rest of the world didn't exist. Um, obviously we wear masks, we say like nothing's open here. So there, there have been some impacts, but it's, um, I th I've felt very lucky to be in a, in a place which is quite rural. Um, so a lot of the stuff that we do here is not kind of, you know, city centric people focused anyway. It'll be going for walks and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, and I'm very glad the weather is improving now because winter was evil. I thought that COVID winter was cruel, cruel. But yeah, I think I'll leave it here for now because I know the other Mendoza from the past has got a lot to talk about about this program you're about to watch. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for your support. I really appreciate appreciate you sticking around um, with the YouTube channel. And if you can't join Patreon for whatever reason, do you still say stay subscribed because the moment I get a chance to, you know, bring a series from Patreon over to um, YouTube, I absolutely will. Um, and as I say, if you want to be able to kind of watch me continuously all year um go over to patreon because i do react all year i i actually haven't taken a break from reacting i've continued doing things um but i've just needed to do them just for just for patreon because the editing time is is a lot less it's still quite a lot for me because i still do kind of insert i do proper long edits so even if it's a full length reaction it will still have inserts and asides and stuff like that in it so 
Um, even for me, a Patreon reaction isn't, you know, as simple as it is for other reactors who will just literally, you know, post it and it's it's gone. Um, but no, I like I like to put little extras in for people. So I hope I hope you enjoy those and um and yeah, I really hope you enjoy it join us on Patreon. For me the most fun thing about Patreon is actually the Discord um server. We've got a Discord link that you can actually sign up to um once you've any tier that you um sign up for on Patreon. You can join us in the Discord server, which is where we all chat to each other directly about stuff. We've got a photography channel, we've got a movie channel, we've got channels for all the shows that I'm reacting to, um, and we've just got a general channel where we just chat about shit and life and, and all sorts of things. And it's been really amazing to actually start to get to know, um, you know, the people who are watching these reactions. Obviously, you know me quite well by now because you see me blathering on all the time. Um, but aside from comments, and I'm a lurker, like a lot of you guys, that I, I there are reactors I've watched for years. I feel like they're my best friends. I've never, they don't know I exist. Never laid a comment. So it's really cool with Discord because instead of comments about the thing, you can actually have one-on-one -on -one conversations. And um, I find people, you know, we go, oh, you said this thing in a reaction. Can you tell us more about kind of how you felt about that and why you reacted that way? And it it's a really nice way to have that conversation because sometimes comment sections can be a bit sort of feisty. I find the Discord server with it being like an open chat is a lot easier um, and everyone is just awesome in there. Um, I think we're making pretty good friends at this point. So come and join us in Discord, come and join us in Patreon. Um, and yeah, until the next time, I'll now leave you with other me. Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script tonight. Today we're going to be watching season two. No. Today we're going to be watching season five, episode two of The Expanse, and this episode is called Churn, which may, is making me think this is our kind of Amos full backstory back in Baltimore kind of thing. I I still think he's coming to kill somebody. Still can't remember the name. I think it was Lydia. But the, the the woman who is like a mother kind of a figure to him, like best friend, mentor, carer, all seems to be wrapped up in one. She's passed, so I'm assuming he's got some scores to settle. But that also puts him on Earth. And we know that an asteroid is headed to Earth and he's going to hit it, what was it, 12 days? I can't, but it's close anyway. It's close. Um, so we've got, we have that to worry about. We also have Bobby track, attempting to track down Marco in our os, but Bobby and Avasarella are trying to track him down using the contacts that Bobby's got through the sort of Eastside Martin network to, to work her way up um, the, the sort of food chain to mark ultimately to someone who would be able to either Marco himself or at least the circle so that she can kind of break into that. So that's going to be interesting. Um, Alex is also on Mars because he seems to want to kind of come and have some makeup session with his family, which is crazy. I'm kind of with his wife and Bobby on this one of just like he had the out there was, they want to move on. They didn't want him just coming in and out of their lives. Um, and, you know, also Bobby saying, you know, if you wanted to be your kid's hero, you should have actually bothered showing up about three years ago. And that's kind of right, is that kind of Alex wants his cake and eat it. Um, so I'm a bit pissed at Alex right now because I sort of forgave him on the basis that I felt like he'd made a choice and been honest. And even if that hurt people, at least he'd made a definitive statement. This is what I want to be doing with my life. I want to be out here in space doing this stuff. Um, but now it kind of feels like, oh, so that's over. So now he's going to go back to Mars until the next exciting thing happens. And that's going to be enormously disruptive to both his wife and, well, his ex-wife and his son and it's just got to stop it so there's that uh we have naomi now on route she's off to see philip 
that's not good. Um, Avasarala's on Luna. I love the irony of the whole argument between, you know, Avasarala and Nancy was about Avasarala not being against kind of a new colonial expedition across the new ring planets and Nancy Gao saying, um, let's do it, let's go for it. So what does Nancy Gao do to stick two fingers firmly up to Avasarala? She gives her the job <laughs> of basically overseeing the very kind of colonial expeditions that she was so against. And I, I, I'm very entertained by Nancy Gao doing that, especially given how dirty Avasarala played during that election. But I was extra entertained by Avasarala just shouldering that and accepting it as the, the price of politics. So very entertained by that. I really do want to see more showdowns with Nancy Gao and Avasarala. I think there's going to be some very interesting potential conversations with them when we get the disaster because if Nancy Gao is on earth obviously there's the option we don't know yet well you might know I don't know when this asteroid is going to hit or if it's going to hit I feel like it's going to hit though if the asteroid hits is it going to be an apocalyptic event is it going to be um an extinction level event for humanity on earth is it going to be just very devastating in terms of numbers of lives taken? Is it going to be devastating in terms of the specific lives that are taken, as in the sort of, um, you know, wipe out the UN, wipe out, you know, key leaders, that sort of thing. Like, we have no idea where this asteroid is going to hit or what, what the repercussions will be. My sense is that there are multiple asteroids on the way so i oh, i'm quite concerned actually that earth is going to be uninhabitable at the end of this which obviously is gonna uproot humanity from its cradle of civilization and then off we go i guess to the the rest of the ring gates if they're still working which brings us to the proto molecule stuff which is I assume Cortazar is still working on proto-molecule related stuff for Anderson Dawes and um, for Anderson Dawes and Fred Johnson. So we don't yet know what sort of stuff is going to happen there. And, and what we discovered was just that little dollop of proto-molecule that was on the Rossi was what reanimated the billions of years probably dead or dormant um infrastructure that was on illus so if cortisar and, and guys are messing around with protein molecule it could at any moment reactivate another planet um, at the moment despite miller's plans on illus it appears that the other ring gates are still fully functional um, and we seem to have a time jump last episode from season four. So I think we're looking maybe a year or more after events that took place on Illus. Because um, a lot of the many other planets now have been colonized. We saw that in a news program. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really interesting. I'm kind of curious to see how that manifests. I think that's probably, I, I feel like that's the storyline that's going to kick off after the meteor maybe that's going to kind of come more into play but we'll see but anyway lots basically quite a lot of stuff is teed up to go freaking mental this season so i'm excited about it so without further ado let's have at it why are there plants in space what's happened oh shit We're in new systems. Mayday. We have been attacked by an unknown vessel. Oh! Pirata belt. What is she? This house. You want to kill Fajon? Don't worry about what I want. Worry about what I am due. 
A tenth of all you collect. No dives here. And no prisoner killed without permission from the controlling faction. To tell us who we can kill. I am Kamina Drama. You respect my claim, or you die and become a story I tell the next captain. Maybe that, or maybe we finish you. Good luck. Oh, good luck. They're not gonna make it easy. What would be the fun in that? Oh, lads. They target lock us. Oh. Signal the motor. Yeah, let's do this. Whoa. Ooh. Oh, that was, um... <laughs> yes! <laughs> nice shot, no day! They're trying to power back up. At least give them a chance to be polite. We will. But if they target lock us again, kill them. Yes! That was Ashford-worthy. Beautiful. So Drummer's got a little crew going. Back to pirates. <laughs> good pirates. They don't go killing people. Go tell everyone I am in control of this area now. Yeah, boss man. Yeah, boss man. You bet. You loved. Suleiman Al Mari. Who do you fucking sweep at them? You people took everything from us. Not everything. All of us. <laughs> this was our good day. <laughs> right, it was. We woke up in debt, and we gone and fall asleep with money to keep flying. Maybe even a little extra for share. Wow. The more you share, the more well, you will we'll be plenty. Be plenty. Hey, that too. I think. <laughs> if nothing else. Oh, hello. You have a bounty on this ship. Oh, is this? It's the Tynan. Place Ashford's ship. Ooh. I never thought I'd actually find it. Wow. Okay, let's get that fucking shit back. So, that looked a little bit like Kamina's find herself at least a sort of rebound partner there. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm so excited. That was such a good opening. I'm so glad to have Kamina back. I really missed her last episode. Baltimore, yeah. Fuck off. Look at the state of that. Wow. <sighs> what a shot. That was good. Wow. Look at all the people. It's giving me an headache. Aww. Oh, please, Drew. Fuck off. Something I can do for you? Hmm. <laughs> Timothy. Timothy? Lydia was always waiting for you to turn up. Timothy? <laughs> Kitchen's mostly packed up. Only thing I have left is tea. I moved in here ten years ago. But I knew her a little bit before that. I'm Charles. Were you good to her, Charles? Probably be better have been Charles. I get good energy off Charles. We were good to each other, boy. How did she die? She spent every waking moment hoping to see you again. You show up now, and that's all you want to know is... Amos, don't. Amos. It was an aneurysm in her sleep. <sighs> Good. We got old, and we had a lot of mileage on us. 
She went to bed fine. And when I woke up, she wasn't there anymore. Oh. That's how she died. You need to beat me up to make yourself feel better about <sighs> abandoning her here. Just do it. Was she happy? I don't know. I think so. But there was so much she kept to herself. What am I going to do? How the fuck am I going to go on without her? He sounds great. Oh, did Amos. Oh, God. I knew some of what her life was before. I didn't care. She just did what she had to do to survive. Well, you can't judge someone by what they do to make rent. Mm. Sometimes you can. <laughs> you were in that world, too, right? She told me some of it. You were born into it. When you got old enough, the Johns didn't want you. So they started you working muscle. But she knew that they would use you up till there was nothing left. Float to the top or sink to the bottom. Wow. Everything in the middle is a churn. <laughs> she told me that. She saved you? No one really saves anyone. She taught me how to save myself. Mm. Why are you leaving? It's not mine. The guy who owns it, he wants it back. Fuck's sake. What was his name? Eric. Stop packing. <laughs> Charles ain't going nowhere. Oh, man, that got me. You know what your problem is? Oh, my dick's too big. Crow the fuck up, man. This is serious. The belt protecting and policing itself is a good thing. You know what your problem is? Tell me. You think that if someone's an underdog, that means they're the good guy. I don't think Fred Johnson does think that, actually. Well, the knives will stop once we have the last of the whole plates in attached. When is that gonna be? Never! 12 hours? 18 if I do it perfect. <laughs> Six if you don't mind dying later on. 18 sounds great. You could go back to your room at the station, catch some actual shot eye. Uh, no. With the Rossies home, I'll get some earplugs. Aww. Oh. Oh. Holden, I haven't been completely honest with you. I'm shocked. There is another piece to this, but it proves that someone is going after the proto molecule. Meet me and I will tell you about it. Just you. No. I appreciate your candor. Not, not being candid. But there's really nothing I can do. Yeah. Well done. Do me a. Dead. But it proves that someone is going after the proto molecule. Jim. God damn it. Oh. It's such. There's no one on earth I'd be having this me in. Is she dead? Did she though? This feels like a Lebowski situation to me. This is a bummer, man. I don't think she'd leave her phone, so now I'm thinking she has been kidnapped. Shit. Fred, we have a problem. Uh oh. Hey. Come in. Howdy. Hey. Oh, wow. Yes, please. Ugh, you alone. I wasn't listening. I'm a shitty friend. Mm. 
Amos says worse than that five times a week, and I know he'll take a bullet for me. I'm pretty sure I already have. Yes. Is Alex in on it now? I've been buying for months. This is all black market. You got enough here to gear up an army, Bobby. Ava Sarala is funding me. You're working undercover for Earth to infiltrate Mars? Ava Sarala is the only one I know for sure who isn't in on it. You gotta go to the police. <laughs> are you joking? Well, that's funny. The police are in on it. I've got a possible lead on stealth missiles. Jesus Christ. You know him? Yeah. You and I are patriots, but Captain Sovater, he's got more dust in his vein than blood. No, there's no way a guy like that sells weapons to someone that can use them against Mars. Mm. He's a senior lecturer at the War College. We don't travel in the same circles. He'll talk to me. Wow. Okay. 